most congested roads in Europe. And it's the emergency services on two wheels that can slide through the traffic and get vital help where it's most needed, fast. The bike squads of Essex Police and West Midlands Ambulance Service race to protect the public and save lives. Coming up, a driver needs airlifting to hospital. A ride that's been pimped too much. That's basically dangerous condition. Paramedics fight to save a life. All clear, all clear. All clear. And how to stay positive. Yeah, look on the bright side, you're not wanting to murder. Birmingham. Another 12 hour shift for the biker paramedics. Ready for action, Steve Harris. And 999 is coming in. It's serious. A man's collapsed. Steve needs to get there as fast as possible. On his young FJR 1300, he can sprint across town quicker than the ambulance. The bikes carry all the same equipment as an ambulance and are fitted with our cameras. So we arrive at the scene of an incident the second they do. Steve gets an update on route. The man's heart has stopped. A bystander's doing CPR. Riding right across the city centre takes Steve just two minutes. He's the first paramedic on scene. Outside the Hippodrome Theatre. One of the theatre staff has been doing chest compressions since he fell to the floor. Steve goes straight to the man's head to begin using a bag to get air to the man's lungs. Screaming immediately. I was going to can you come back on the chest? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Mark's arrived as backup and takes over the chest compressions. Mark must compress the chest hard enough to squeeze the heart, mimicking a proper heartbeat, pumping blood around the body. Steve's bag will act as the man's lungs. Together they form a temporary life support system. carry a mobile defibrillator. If a patient has no pulse, an electric shock may be enough to restart the heart. Okay, all clear, all clear. Inspector. Yeah. I've got, I've got a notebook. Double check that for me. That feels like an actual. That is an That's an right, the shock's worked. Yep. The man's heart is beating again. An ambulance crew has arrived to take the man to hospital. Right. CPR, good CPR on arrival. Has obviously vomited. He's had one shock. He's now got an output and he's breathing for himself. How long did we reckon he was down? Couple of minutes. That's one brilliant. Good really job good. Course, though, that's, that's, that's that's brilliant. Just possibly refresh it today. Oh, well, you get a recommendation off me. Is this part of the training today? Yeah, you passed. <laughs> He's going to vomit, I think. On the side. Right. Okay. You say? Okay, on three. One, yep. two, three. Okay. What's that on? One, two, three. Push, 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 push. Yeah. 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 Uh, that first aid of reserve within uh, seconds. Hello there. Did you know where you are? Where's the ambulance? Hello, it's 
uh, Westman Home Ambulance. Uh, we're coming in with a post cardiac arrest alert. One shock, he is cannulated and we'll be there. Excuse me, within about four minutes over. In the ambulance, the man's breathing again. His heart is beating, he's starting to come round. But as he regains consciousness, he vomits again. Vomiting is a common side effect of cardiac arrest, caused by the strain of the cardiac arrest sending the body's nervous system into disarray. The initial CPR done by the theatre staff member may have saved this man's life. Right at hospital, patients in, it's now starting to come awake a little bit and respond to us. With the patient safely in hospital, there's one person Mark and Steve want to thank. Hello, Hello. You? he's You're sat okay. up, yeah, he's talking, he's, he's wide awake, sat up, yeah, talking, really? and uh, excellent result. Really, oh, brilliant. Thank you so much for your no, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. And this first aid you did? The, yeah, you I said did it's my today. refresher course today. Yeah. That's it today, yeah. so it was So, so from, doing, from doing that update, that mm. refresher, yeah. all of a sudden it's, yeah, it's yeah. there in front all of you for real. Today and yeah. it'll, right. I have right. to say, from a member of the public CPR, Mm -hmm. I've, I've never seen a member of the public do such effective CPR as that. Oh, thank, so thank, thank you so much. Really, really good. Well, thank yeah. you. Well, oh, thank you. Proud of yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Good night. So, as the sooner CPR uh, is started, the better uh, outcome, the better chance the patient has. Uh, doing what he did has ensured that uh, oxygenated blood has continued to get through to the, the guy's brain. Still to come, a painful break. Ah! All right. Cops <laughs> clamp down on dodgy wheels. Uh, we can prohibit the vehicle from use on the road. Yeah. Okay. Essex, early Sunday morning at Biker Cop HQ. On patrol today, PC Steve Stomp Allen. Today, Stomp will be riding the unit's undercover bike, top speed over 170 miles an hour. Colleague PC Mick Wills will be riding alongside him on a march to deal with any incidents out on the county's roads. This morning, their beat covers the area around Basildon, and while patrolling the fast and busy A120 dual carriageway, Stomp spotted something wrong with the green VW up ahead. He radios through to Mick, who can move ahead of the vehicle to pull it over. Yeah, I know. Right. Your car, is it? Yes, mate. Who had the mods done on it? Uh, mate. You? Yep. Right, you've got dangerous condition there. Right. It looks like this driver might have pimped his ride a bit too much. The wheel arches are fouling on the wheels, aren't they? Right, yeah. They need rolling, that's why. Pardon? They need ro arches need rolling, that's why. I started doing it with a hammer, mate. Nah. Nah, you basically they're rubbing is it on, on the work on the tires you go. Rubber, right, come around here. Watch yourself on the traffic. You can see, look, it's rubbing, it's catching. Right, that's before I yeah, that's, that's nah, before. I was to lean on that and bounce that, that would catch. Yep. I can't even get my finger in there. Right. That's basically dangerous condition. Right, they proper Porsche wheels, are they? Yeah they are mate, yeah. Where you get them from? eBay. eBay? Right. <laughs> right, I'm qualified as a vehicle examiner, right. okay? For what that's doing, yep. we can prohibit the vehicle from use on the road, right. okay? You're going to get a ticket for it here and now, right. but you can't do it. What you've actually got is put a spacer between the wheel and the hub. It's pushing the wheel out, and it's also been lowered. So what is in fact is actually doing, as the vehicle goes along, it's bumping along, the wheel arch is catching on the tyre. You can see it on like on the marks there. Um, basically it's dangerous, eventually that could rub to such an extent that the tyre could just go pop as he's driving along, in, in the extreme case. Each year the police investigate thousands of accidents involving cars with defects. And problem tyres are the number one cause. You're going to get a ticket for dangerous condition, because that hasn't just, that tyre, 60 pound and three points. Oh dear. Um, but that is silly. 
Yeah. All right. Okay. No, start clean. And you're going to get it. You're going to get it changed. I will. My other points were on a moped. Does it? Will I still lose my license? Um, or? When did you get your pass for test? Uh, say on there. 20th of June 2009. So you're going to have six points, aren't you, in your two-year probationary period? Comes up in June, I think. I'm allowed 12, isn't it? Basically, what you'll do is you'll get a letter through from the DVLA. Um, they will, if you get six points within the two-year period, you've already got three. Yeah. So you four, because um, oh, we four. had a bit of trouble with sending off the licence and that, and they give me an extra point for it. So. Oh, right. Because you hit that six-point figure within two years, DVLA will probably then write to you and say that your licence is, yeah. you've been revoked and you're now a provisional licence holder again. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason why it's your age group is probably the highest risk group on the road because I'm not going to say you're stupid, no, um, but you're young, you're keen, and you don't necessarily realise what the dangers are. And we want you to realise what the dangers are, okay? Yep. So that's why your insurance is also so high. Tell me about it. Yeah. One in three male drivers aged between 17 and 20 crash their cars within two years of passing their test. Could I appeal and say because I'm a worker now, I still need my license if they let me keep it, or when they take the license, um, am I, I think, am I going to get a ban, basically? No, you're not getting a ban. Right. You will become a provisional license holder again. So I'm going to test again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can appeal the matter by taking the matter to the court and hoping the magistrates yeah. don't issue you a point. I mean, I drive to London and back every yeah. Well, that's the one for the fine notes. If you want to appeal it and take it to court, yep. you fit, fill that in and send it in. But I will warn you, if you go to court and get convicted, all the penalties are subject to the magistrate's discretion. Right. And they may fine you more, they may fine you the same. They may give you the same points. So it's down to them. So you take a chance if you go to court. Sweet. Right. OK, now get it home, get it off the road, get it sorted, please. Yep. He has modified that vehicle to such an extent, it's a danger to himself again and anyone else out there. He knows what he's done and what the problem is. They shouldn't interfere with a vehicle, uh, not to that extent. He was aware of the problem. So I decided to issue him a fixed penalty ticket, £60 and uh, three points. And it's harsh, I know, but they are young male drivers. Statistics show they are the biggest group and the biggest risk out on our roads. is on duty. Uh, got a call into the city centre, um, Corporation Street, somebody fallen. you to do then is just to lie back. All right. What made you fall, Bridget? I, just, I tripped up the Okay. Okay. Just going for the bus. Okay. So apart from the pain that you've got in your right arm, you've got pain anywhere I'm else? My knees, but I think they're okay. Yeah. Okay. It's just here. Okay. We'll have a look at that in a second. Just leave it resting against my leg. Yeah. All right. Any pain in your centre of your neck or your back at all? No. Nothing no. at all. No. You need to get this jacket off. I need to have a look at your arm and I need to do your blood pressure. Um, the easiest and most comfortable way of getting to you to have a look and to do your blood pressure and that would be to cut the jacket, yeah? Are you alright with that? Are you sure? Okay. Relax your arm on there now. Nice and still. There are 27 delicate bones in the wrist and hand and it doesn't take much to snap them. Okay, can you move your fingers for me, Bridget? Okay. Is there any pain in your wrist when I'm pressing? All right, nice and still, nice and still. What we're going to do is I'm going to bring that blanket across your tummy to support your wrist as well. All right, keep nice and still there, lovely. Okay, going to do your blood pressure now. Just relax. Bridget, at the moment, scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst pain ever, what score would you give it? Seven or eight. Okay. Just going to go tight on your arm, okay. Are you allergic to anything? No. Apart from falls? Uh, uh, first one, I hope it's the last. Yeah, okay, your blood pressure's good. What I intend to do 
just to pop a needle into your hand, yeah, and we can give you something for the pain. All right, we'll give you some morphine. Yeah, I need you to tell me if you start to feel any difference. All right. We've still got a way to go yet, so. All we're going to do is hold fire at that. What score would you give the pain at the moment? About four, three, four. Let me know if it changes at all. All right. An ambulance arrives to get Bridget to hospital, but first they've got to get her off the ground as painlessly as possible. What I want to do is just support your arm from the elbow to the hand. A vacuum splint will support the wrist. Just relax your hand out. Sorry, did that get in you in the eye then? She's got an eye injury as well. Right <laughs> off. Well, I do apologise. Okay. Right, you're going to feel it go tight around your, your arm and your hand. Right, is that tight in your arm now? I think that's enough. Okay, we're going to sit up after three. One, two, three. Slowly does it. Slowly does it. How'd you feel? A bit wobbly? I told you you would. All right. Okay. One, two, three, and push. How's your pain now we've moved you? Still an ache? Yeah, you've got a bit of deformity in the wrist as well as a bit of swelling and obviously yeah. when I pressed on earlier you... Oh, right. Yeah. Um, is it still an ache or what score would you give it now? Four or five. Four or five, okay. We can give you some more pain relief on the truck. Absolutely lovely lady. You know, we've done everything we could. She seems to... Uh, be far more comfortable than when we first got there so you know we've done our job as far as uh, making sure she's okay um, stabilizing and making sure she doesn't deteriorate and coping with the pain so her pain's now down to a delight so that's as good as we can get it and obviously now it's uh, x-rays and make sure everything's okay a broken wrist is the most common fracture in women under 75 and one of the most painful if not dealt with swiftly bones can heal out of alignment and something as simple as holding a pen becomes difficult. Still to come, paramedics are called to an ex-soldier out in the cold. But members of the public are concerned. And Oxford Body paramedics call in the air ambulance. Kidlington on the outskirts of Oxford, like a paramedic Eddie Webb on duty. As he sets off to one of the standby points, a 999 comes in. This sort of speed could mean anything from broken bones to internal bleeding or spinal damage. Yeah, 299 there, just initial sit rep, uh, two vehicle RTC, TVP on scene, ox fire being requested, and second crew. Um, we've got the helicopter coming. Yeah. Right, what we've got. Seatbelt was worn, has hit the windscreen. She's got some facial injuries, all teeth are in place. Um, she's complaining of some chest pain. Right foot, clearly got possibly fractured dislocation. Just pop this around your arm for a sec, all right? Rachel, wasn't it? To minimise the risk of paralysis, Rachel must be kept absolutely still. Right foot, got a sharp scratch on your arm here. Yeah. With potentially serious injuries, an air ambulance is going to be the fastest way to get her to hospital. Yes, star, well done. Breathe away nicely for me. Nice deep breaths. You're good. Doing all right there. Okay. Your, your chest hurts. All right. Well, just a quick listen. That pain, Rachel. What did you score out of ten? About an eight. All right. This will help you with the pain. Okay. 
Rachel could have hit the steering wheel at over 60 miles an hour and may have crushed her ribcage. Eddie needs to give her morphine. There's only one way to get Rachel safely out, and that's down to the fire brigade. I think the pedal's going to have to come off. Certainly the roof's going to have to come off for the first page. Okay, how are we doing? Do you feel the pain easing a bit? Not really. All right, oh. we'll give you a little bit more. This might, might just make you feel a little bit woozy, all right? Yeah. Right, Rachel. Fire service going to have to take the roof off to get you out, okay? So there'll be a lot of noise and movement, but you're perfectly safe, all right? We'll make sure that nothing gets near you, all right? Every second counts, but this is a delicate operation. Eddie must keep Rachel keep calm throughout arm. the ordeal. All right, Rachel. I'll come under here with you as well, all right? This is just to protect us from the glass, okay? I'm, oh, I'm here no, with no, you. No, no, no. All right. You're doing really well, Rachel. You're doing really, really well. Right, Rachel, what I'm going to do now is just pop this mask on. It's just oxygen, all right? Good girl, well done. Hold on to my fingers if you want. That's a good girl. It's all right, try not to worry. Just making it easy, easier for us to get you out, all right? Because we don't want to move you from the position that you're sitting in. So we want to try and keep you as straight as we can, all right? You're doing really, really well. Good girl, well done. We're, just, we're going to see daylight in a minute, all right? Because we're just about to take the roof off. So it'll get very bright, but that's, that's nothing to worry about. There we go, that's daylight. All right. After 10 minutes, the roof's off and they're ready to get Rachel out. When, when, what we do is when we go, when we're ready to slide up the board, if I take the foot, yeah. if I get my hands and knees, I'll take the foot, I'll support the foot, we'll splint it when it's out, yeah? Yeah. All right, Rachel, doing really, really well. I'll wait till she's on the board. The board is oh, slipped behind oh, her, right, so no, ready to move her now, inch by inch. Yeah. Rob? I'm just going to give her another five morphine if that's all right. Please do, yeah, please do. Can I just squeeze in here a sec just to yeah. get to that arm? He's all right there. All right, Rachel. Just a little bit more pain for this, Rachel, okay? Really How are you here. doing? How is the pain? What's the pain out of ten, Rachel? About a six, all right. Just keep your hand underneath that. Doing all right, Rachel? We've got somebody in here with the... You all right, Rachel? Oh, actually, have got a really long wind. Ready, steady, slide. Well done, Rachel, well done. Readjust. Everyone happy? Yeah. Ready, steady, slide. Okay, well done. Yeah, I'm going to keep hold of this leg, all right? Uh, we're going to go straight out. Is that just is that for Danny? Anyway, might go. All right. Right, ACA. He's been told. Back. Cheers John, thanks for your help mate. Cheers. It looks like chaos but everybody's actually got their own task to do uh, and you're in your own little world really, you're in your own little bubble because you just know exactly what everybody wants. Fire servers ask us what we need, we tell them and they just get on with it and the next thing you look and it's done. It was um, quite a serious impact but yeah really lucky this could have been a lot worse. Mid-afternoon, and the school runs making the county's roads even busier. On patrol, biker cop Ray Jeffrey. Police cameras have just picked up something amiss. Ray's on the case. You alright? Yeah. Try and keep you too long. 
There's a number plate reader back on uh, Third Avenue, and it's pinged up that the driver of this car may not have a license. Oh no, I, I do. Have you got I'm one, on love? Sorry, I'm on a provisional, and she's got a full license. Oh, okay. So. Where are your L plates then? They flew off, and I've been trying to get up. Well, we're supposed to get some more today. Well, okay. Let's sense. get your details. If you are driving it without L plates, right. you're driving it without a license. I'm going to do some additional checks just okay. to make sure there's nothing else. The I'm aware the MOT's run out on the car, though. Did you know that? It was the 4th for next month, 4th of April. No, it's shown as expired already. So all in all, you're having a good day, aren't you? Yeah. Now we've got Kaylee driving the vehicle. Could you check her next, please? Yep, yeah, that's all received. Thank you, Matt. You cannot drive a car on a road as a provisional licence holder with no L plates displayed. You've got a supervisor, that's fine. I know you're insured, so that's fine. job is all the time that you're using it on the road. I can lawfully take it off you because she's not insured to drive it unless she's got insurance on another car, is she? No, she was insured. She's just taken it off because she was supposed to get a car. Yeah. She hasn't managed to get one, so there's no So she can't right. lawfully drive it away from here either? No. I can't allow you to continue driving it. Right. But what I'm trying to avoid at the moment is seizing it unnecessarily. Can I just park it what in I'm here? Ask, and go to that's what I was going to come to. I'm going to have to deal with you for the offence of driving a vehicle otherwise than in accordance with your licence, which is the three-pointer. We'll park it up over here, get those L plates fixed, and then you can carry on. But at least if I don't seize it, it's not going to cost you another £150 to get it back from the recovery yard, is it? Unfortunately, yeah, I can't, I'm not going to sway that. I can't treat you any differently than I would treat anybody else. And you know, don't you, as a provisional, that's why it's got that big red L yeah, on your, no, your license, because they have to be on there. I did have them, and it just went. Look on the bright side, you're not wanted for murder. No, but I've just paid £800 pound out for the car and I'm on benefits, Ooh. so... Blimey. Motoring is very, very expensive, as you're finding, isn't it? I'm going to deal with you by way of a ticket. And what that means is you're going to get three points on your licence, but also your MOT has expired. Oh. That's another ticket, but it's not endorsable. It's not points on your licence, all right? And it's also been expired for two weeks. It's not like it happened today. You've got to keep on top of stuff with cars. No, and these number plate readers throw you at us all of the time because it just says, stop this car, stop this car, all right? So the minute your car is unlawful, you didn't take it out because you will get stopped nowadays. I'm hoping there's space in the car park for her. Desperately trying not to take the car off the lady because that would leave her with the young tots in a bit of a predicament, really. All right, ready? Just back it in there, Kaylee, all right? I'm not testing your reversing skill. <laughs> <laughs> Just stick it on there like that. Lock it up, next thing it'll get nicked. <laughs> you okay what you've got to do with those tickets, Kaylee, aren't you? Yeah. You understand all that? Yeah. Brilliant, all right, love. Apart from meeting me, try and have a nice day. Yeah. All right, then. I've got to get the kids, clean the house, cook the dinner. Apart from that, you're having a lovely time, aren't you? Oh, yeah. It does play on your conscious a little bit that she is strapped for cash. She has got young kids, she's a single income. Yes, I could have seized the car, but I've also got a duty of care and they've got young children in the car. Um, I'm aware also that if I seize that car on top of the £60 fine for the licence and the £60 fine for the MOT, the fact that she's got to pay at least another £45 to get it re-MOT'd anyway, she will then have another £150 fine uh, to recover the car from the compound and I don't think that's acceptable really. It's obviously my decision at the end of the day and I chose to so allow her to go and get £2 worth of L plates and then she can carry on driving lawfully. Just hope she doesn't get a ticket from the WL Alliance because that would just make her day, wouldn't it? In Birmingham, biker paramedic Mark Hayes is on his way to a man reported to be out cold outside the city centre of his block. How you doing? Where are we? Gentleman just there, mate, comatosed. He won't even come range. You wiggle him, his eyes just roll to the back of his head. No, they won't know what he was going to be. You're going to wake up, mate. Open your eyes, mate. Come on. Wake awake, Keith. Wake awake, Keith. Hello. You're going to talk to me? No, no, no. no. Uh, staff have called for us because you're unconscious, yeah? 
If you open your eyes and talk to me, I'll know that you're not unconscious. Do you need an ambulance at all? No, you're just a rough sleeper, yeah? Yeah? Obviously you can't stay here and sleep, can you? You want me to leave you? Yeah. Police issues. The man appears not, not to need medical care, but he can't stay here. Mark will have to call in the police. Paramedic, police cameras, are any PCSOs on the air? Yes, police cameras on strike. Thank you, uh, it's uh, Mark, paramedic. Um, I've got a gentleman on the floor who's been rough sleeping. He's, he's not cooperating with myself. Uh, it's a job for police. Yeah, that's understood. No problem, I'll pass it on for you. Just to let you know, unfortunately, we've had to pass it over to the police, mate, because you're in a public place and we're going to keep getting called out. So the police are en route. So if you want to just get up and move around the corner, that would be a good idea. Let's go. So is that a no? The problem is, because you're lying on the floor here, people think there's something wrong with you medically, and they're going to keep calling... We know that, but they don't, and they're going to keep calling for ambulances. So as long as you're here, we're going to have a stream of ambulances coming out to you, and we can't have that. So if you're, if you're out, out the way... Take me somewhere else. Just move you somewhere else. I can't be here. Right? Look down the beach. Huh? I see my queen and my coat, Right? Why, why should I walk miles just to get my we'll head done? We'll give you a lift. No. No. Have, you, have you been in touch with the homeless services? It's not the point. I serve my queen and I serve my country by commanding. Officer, I'm a chief and commanding officer. So you're entitled to your help, yeah? When well, nobody's disputing that, nobody's disputing that at all. I'm just, I'm, I'm not asking for, for my help. Right, I know help. you're not. I know you're not. But members I'm of the public are concerned. For right, to bed down. But I just say to bed down. Can you understand our point of view that people see somebody with their eyes closed lying on the floor and they think that they're unwell? You know what? I guess I'm going to have to be arrested on camera. There's no need to arrest you. The man says he was in the army. Homelessness amongst the ex-military is a common problem. Despite steps in recent years, it's thought that former servicemen account for 12% of rough sleepers. We appreciate his, his situation. It can't be, can't be nice for him. He's on the streets had no sleep last night, he just wants to get some shut eye, and we really do appreciate that. The officers have asked nicely for him to move, he's failing to do so, so uh, I think he's going to end up being moved by the police. On your feet, come on mate. Assault! It's not assault, come on, look on your feet. Assault! Assault! Assault me! I'm being assaulted! I'm being assaulted by the police and the ambulance service! I'm trying to help you, that's all. You can't stay yeah. here. Yeah, don't, don't you can't stay here. I'm being assaulted by the police and the ambulance service. Why don't you bog off back on your little bait? Right? And go and, and go and find the victim at the gym. Well. Can you move somewhere else, please? Out no. of the public view. No. Why not? Because I want the public to see. What the Queen and country have done to me. Oh God. You see that camera? Where are you after? To an ex lieutenant in the British Army. Which way are you going, Chap? Doesn't matter which way I'm going. This is what I get. I get bullied by the police and the ambulance service. Get the off me. I do feel sorry for the chap. There's obviously issues there. He's, a, he's ex-serviceman, says that he's served his, his queen and country. 
and he's entitled to sleep where he wants and you know I take my hat off to him that he's, he's, he's served his country however um, if you lie on the floor in the city centre with your eyes closed you're gonna get an ambulance it's gonna happen still to come when it's perhaps time to hang up your skates how young are you 17 backwards <laughs> okay 71 and the biker paramedics turned daredevils just incredible fantastic feeling oh that was awesome We've got a Trevor 9 call to the ice rink in the city centre. I'm uh, unsure of what's going on there. It's thought that more than 8,000 people are injured every year on UK ice rinks. It's a quick dash across town. Within minutes, Mark's arrived, first on scene. And he's in for a bit of a surprise. Hello. How are we doing? Okay. What's your name? Alan Humphrey. Alan. Alan. All right. Keep yeah. nice and still. My name is Mark. All right. Yeah. What I'm going to do is just move you over here out of the way. If that's yeah. all right. I was grazing happily, and then I was on the floor. Okay. All right. And when you uh, fell to the floor and hit your head, do you remember her? Was you knocked out or? I don't know, it just turns on the floor, didn't you? Get up as quick as you can, don't you? Make sure nobody saw you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you've fallen, hit your head. How did you feel after that? Sick. Sick? Yeah. Do you feel sick at the moment? Uh, Nausea could indicate concussion. Okay. Keep still. Do you have any pain in your neck at all? Mark's also checking for damage to Alan's spine. No, any pain down your back? It's just um, red, the graves. Okay. You move everything okay? Any pins and needles? Yeah. No. How young are you? 17 backwards. Okay, 71. What possessed you to go ice skating? Well, I used to go years ago and I brought my grandkids. <laughs> Doing some stunts, were you? No. Some tricks? No. <laughs> Can't do any. Does that hurt? No. Might need a bit of glue in there. I just want to give this a little clean. It's going to be a bit cold. Gentlemen um, rediscovered uh, ice skating doing a trip of somersault by the sounds of it and uh, he's got a, a little bit of a laceration um, nothing too severe uh, probably needs a bit of glue on it um, but he was complaining of nausea prior to our arrival um, he's got a bit of a sweat on so uh, we're just going to do some checks probably walk to hospital a special type of medical super glue does away with the need this for stitches this used to be the main entrance hadn't it years ago tilt back and down we come I walked in, I'm coming out in style. <laughs> there we go. Alan should soon be right as rain and has inspired Mark. We go out to um, so many different situations and so many, uh, so many different uh, age groups. And you get your people that are sitting at home that, you know, uh, won't do much. Um, you know, might have a, a few medical conditions, but they use that as a reason to stay at home and, you know, limit their life. This chap is 70 years of age. And um, he, he told me, what's a 70 year old supposed to feel like? He doesn't feel like he's 70. Um, so he's out doing it and uh, I take my hat off to him. Who knows, maybe when I'm 80, I might be dashing around on a motorbike. If I live that long, you never know. Biking isn't just part of the job for Steve and Mark. It's a lifelong hobby and passion. <laughs> your replacement mate. There you go Steve. That's very impressive. That could be your new passion wagon mate. <laughs> as well as admiring the wheels on display, they get a chance to check out some other slick riders. The wall of death has been a fair of attraction for a hundred years. At a high enough speed, the centrifugal force beats the force of gravity and puts the bike glued to the wall without falling. That's the theory, but not one that Mark and Steve want to test for themselves. 
That's excellent. Phenomenal. Amazing spectacular. Absolutely phenomenal. But there are safer rides on offer. Oh, jeez. Oh. Come on, Steve. I'm not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> One of the most unusual machines at the show is owned by Gabriel Utley, who's hoping to break the motorcycle land speed record, which currently stands at 378 miles an hour. His bike, the Angelic Bulldog, is a bit of a tight squeeze for a well-built paramedic. I can't get out anymore. Oh, that's better. The cab will be mounted on a bike capable of speeds of over 400 miles an hour. Two football pitches a second. My life. To be fair, it's a bit claustrophobic. Um, I couldn't imagine going on to New Street Station in one of these. Is that all comfy? Yeah, you can help me out. No, I'm good. I'll right. see you, mate. No, Ta -ra. Ta -ra. See ya. Steve! <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. It doesn't look as if there's much room to uh, to fit in. <laughs> I'm Mark. Pleased to meet you. How you doing? Let's do this. Are you nervous? Yeah. Yeah. The doors are broken down. Not that I'm to push it. Steve's riding with Matthew Tyrrell, reigning British track racing champion. And Mark is on board with Mark Cosser, reigning British sidecar speedway champion. to a whole new world of biking. <laughs> it's amazing. I just couldn't stop on the seat. It's just incredible. Fantastic feeling. Oh, that was awesome. So twitchy. So, oh, we, you, you've got to have faith in, obviously, uh, the rider, and obviously he's an excellent rider, but so, uh, so nervous. Thing for Mark and Steve to watch is a stunt show. But this time, they decide not to get involved. That's cool. Where's the break? <laughs> Bridget, who was visiting her mum in Birmingham, had broken her wrist. Back home in Jersey, she's having physiotherapy. Right, Rachel. Rachel spent more than three yeah. weeks in hospital. She cracked her steady and broken two ribs on her ankle between two lengthy operations. Tilt back. Alan's made a and good recovery, go. but is in no hurry to get back on the ice rink. Malcolm, whose heart stopped, was in hospital for 15 days, but is now back at home and making a good recovery. Four weeks on, he's still coming to terms with what happened. Well, all I remember is standing outside with my friends, and after that, it, it's a blank. It will be a long recovery process. But I'll see how, how I recover. Time will tell. But at the moment, the way I feel now, you know, I feel great. Good boy. Malcolm will be forever grateful for the hard work of Jonathan, who gave him the initial CPR, Sit. and of Mark and Steve. Sit. Words can't explain, you know. I couldn't thank him enough. Because, you know, what they've done for me is out of this world. They've brought me back to life. <laughs>